start with, let's take a look at our while loop. So let's look at the, we're gonna look at the flow chart first. Um, a while loop, so in terms of our flow chart, a diamond is a condition, a Boolean expression that evaluates to either true or false, and based on whether it does evaluate to true or false, we take one path or the other. Just like we did with an if statement, okay? Um, a rectangle in our flow charts represents some set of statements or operations that, that are performed. So a while loop starts with some condition that we are evaluating, and if that condition evaluates to true, we execute what we call the body of the loop. We execute a set of statements um, as a result. When we're done executing the statements, the flow of execution returns to that condition and evaluates it again. If it still evaluates to true, we execute the body of the loop, the statements, and then once again we return to the condition. Eventually that condition will be evaluated and re, uh, be evaluated to a value of false, in which case we're done with the loop, we skip the body, and we continue with whatever comes after the loop. There are many similarities between an if statement and a while loop. They both have a condition that we evaluate. They both have a block of code um, that runs if that condition is true. But really the difference is we use an if statement when we have a question, and based on that question, we run a chunk of code once, and we use a loop, in this case a while loop, when we have a question and we want to execute a set of statements over and over again as long as the answer continues to be true. Okay, so that's the key, the key difference that we have. So let's take a look at what this looks like in terms of code. So I'm going to switch back to BlueJay. And we're going to create um, several, but our first method, we'll make these all public static void methods so they're easy to run from BlueJay. And this is going to be called while example. This is our example of what a while loop looks like. So we're going to have a comment block here first to explain the while loop. So as we saw in the flow chart, what a while loop does is we first it evaluates a Boolean expression, meaning some expression that evaluates to true or false. If it evaluates to true, the while loop executes the body of the loop and then re-evaluates the condition. If false, it skips the body and continues. So the behavior is very similar to an if statement, except the key here is this part. It reevaluates the condition and then potentially runs the body multiple times. Regardless of the type of looping structure we use in Java, all looping structures have four different parts. And so for the next few days, I'm going to make sure to use an end of line comment to annotate our code and document each of those four parts so that we get comfortable seeing for different types of looping structures, where do the four parts appear? Okay. So we're going to see that in this example here. Um, we're first going to create a local variable of type int called count, and we're going to initialize it to a value of one. What what we're going, the algorithm, very simple algorithm, but the algorithm we're going to do over and over again in the next couple days um, is we're going to print the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Um, and we're going to do it with different types of looping structures so that we can compare and contrast them. Um, so we're going to start by initializing our, our variable um, to a value of 1, the first number we want to print. And this is the first part of any looping structure. It's the initialization. So we need some sort of initialization with our looping structure. Now we're going to write our while statement. So we're going to say while, and then in parentheses, we will have the Boolean expression that is our condition for the while loop. While count is less than or equal to 5. This is the condition. And it's followed by curly brackets. From a syntax perspective, this is very similar to an if statement. Just instead of if, it says while, but we still have parentheses. 
And in those parentheses, we still have a Boolean expression that evaluates to true or false. And in addition, if it evaluates to true, the code inside the curly brackets, the body of the loop runs, just like the code inside the curly brackets of an if statement executes. So a lot of similarities here compared to what we did before. All right, inside the body of the loop, we need to do something useful. In our case, we're going to print count. And that's the body of the loop. And then there's the final fourth part of every looping structure um, is to somehow update the loop variable. In this case, we're going to use the new plus plus operator we saw to increment the value of count by one. And this is where we update the loop variable. And then after this loop, let's just print that we're done. So again, what, what I'm going to emphasize for the next few days is that every looping structure has to initialize some sort of a loop variable. It has a condition that determines if the loop continues to run. It does something useful, in this case just print a value, and then it updates that loop variable. I, I like the keyword while. I think that's a good name for this type of a loop because when you read the code, if you say while count is less than or equal to five, then we run the body. So while the condition is true, run the body. Okay. Um, the condition being true keeps the loop running. The loop stops when the condition is false. So just keep that in mind. So that's the structure of a while loop. Okay. It looks very similar to what you may have seen in, in Python. So we saw the flowchart. We see some code. Let's use the debugger to help us visualize how this, this works. So um, you're welcome to debug it along with me. Alternatively, feel free just to watch the screen as, as I step through it. But I think it's important that we see the flow of execution because this non-sequential flow of execution, which we started seeing with our if statements in the last chapter, becomes more um, prominent with our looping structures in this chapter. So I have a breakpoint set. I'm going to run this example. The, put the debugger on half the screen here. A reminder that the highlighted line in green is the line of code that we are about to execute. So we're about to initialize the local variable count to 1. And in fact, if I click on the step button in the debugger, we do in fact <coughs> initialize that local variable count to 1, and it shows up in our list of variables. So the next line of code that's going to be executed is to check the condition. Is count less than or equal to 5? 1 is less than or equal to 5. We expect this to be true. And therefore, we expect to run the body of code. And sure enough, if we hit step, the next line of code, we're in the body of the loop. We're going to print the value of count to the terminal. So we do that. And then we're going to increment count by 1. And sure enough, if I hit step, we'll see that not only does count increment by 1, but we go back now to the loop to reevaluate the condition. So count is 2, that's good. And the next line of code that's going to execute is going to check the value of count to see if it's less than or equal to 5. And it still is. <coughs> so we're going to run the body of code again. Print, increment count, reevaluate the condition. And this continues over and over again until eventually at some point when we increment count, it has a value of 6. And now we're taking a look at that condition. 6 is not less than or equal to 5. So when we hit step, the next line of code to be executed is going to be the print. Um, and we're going to print done. We didn't run the body of the loop. And that's what our while loop looks like. So that gives you a sense of a while loop from a flowchart, from the actual syntax of the code, um, and from stepping, stepping through it. Um, 
let's do one more example in the code together, and then we'll do some tracing. Um, but let's create another static method first. Public static void while example two. And let's say in this for this method, we want it to print odd <coughs> integers between 1 and 50. But we're still going to use a while loop, and we're still going to see these four parts of every looping structure. So let's initialize a local variable count to 1. And that's still our initialization. Here's our condition with the while statement. While count is not equal to 50. That's our condition. Then we've got our curly brackets. And inside those curly brackets is the body of the while loop. We want to do something useful in the body. We're going to print the current value of count. That's the body. And then the fourth and final part of every looping structure is to somehow update our loop variable. Since we want to print odd numbers between 1 and 50, we're not going to just increment count by 1. Rather, we're going to say count plus equals 2, and we're going to increment count by 2. And that's where we update the loop variable. And then we'll print done again. Great, great question. So let's actually run it and see. So if we switch, oop, we'll get rid of the debugger for a second. If we actually run this code and we look at the terminal output, that's doing a lot more than printing odd numbers from 1 to 50, right? These, are, these numbers are getting pretty large. Our program is continuing to run. What we've done here is we've created a really common bug with loops, which is what's called an infinite loop, a loop that never stops. Um, sometimes it's very apparent, like it is in this case, because the numbers keep printing. Um, but you can always look at your BlueJ project window. And if you look in the lower right corner, that little bar that's going back and forth shows you that your program is running. And that little icon arrow next to it is a quick way to reset the Java virtual machine. So if I click on this, the program stops, it resets the Java virtual machine, I'm back to a clean slate. You can also reset the Java virtual machine through the tools menu and choose reset Java virtual machine um, or do shift command R on Mac or shift control R on Windows to achieve the same purpose. So yeah, so we created what's called an infinite loop. So let's make a little comment about that because this is a very common bug. Um, and so I have a tip here on how we would kind of avoid this in general. So this is an example of an infinite loop. In general, when we're writing our conditions for loops, we tend not to use the equality and the inequality operator, that is the equal equal or the not equal sign. Um, we tend to use less than or greater than uh, because it helps us avoid these types of issues. So a better condition would be while count is less than 50. Because the issue we have here is that because count starts at 1 and we increment it by 2 every time, we're only going to have odd values for count. So at some point, count's going to be 49, and that's not equal to 50. And then we're going to increment it by 2, and it's going to be 51. But guess what? 51 is also not equal to 50. In fact, count will never equal 50. Um, so as a result, a better way to do this would be like while count is less than 50. Um, and it's going to be, using that technique is going to reduce some of the bugs that we have. 